Hi, it's Matt here from Go Green Autos. So I've recently got in this LDV EV80 electric van. It's the first one I've had in. Uh, they haven't been around too long, so there's, um, these are one of the first ones on the used market. So while it's here, because this one's sold already and it's going out in the next couple of days, I thought I'd better just uh, make a quick video to show you what these are about. So this van was also sold as a diesel but in electric form, most of them are long wheelbase like this, but medium roof, so that sort of height. The, this one is a high roof version, which isn't actually even in the LDV brochure, so I don't know whether they sold too many of these because they weren't publicizing. They even did the electric in this size uh, body shell. But uh, yeah, for an electric van, it's huge and uh, pretty much had the large van market to itself in electric. So when these came out these were the largest electric vans with the biggest battery packs. These got a 56 kilowatt hour pack and the only other large electric van available was the Renault Master but those had a 33 kilowatt hour pack and they didn't have DC rapid charging either. So as you can see on the back these come from Seic Motors SAIC and they are a Chinese manufacturer and they bought LDV and the MG brands from the British many years ago and as you can see you've probably noticed this is the original LDV Maxus body shell so we've got that traditional Maxus front but since these have now been replaced with a new design and they're now uh, they've got rid of the LD, LDV name as well and the new brand is just Maxus with the replacement model being the E-Deliver 9. But while this is the original uh, Maxus body shell, that's all that's being carried over, just the steel panels. Um, obviously this has got an electric drivetrain, but all the interior, the seats, the dash and everything is all new. So this vehicle is a three and a half tonne gross vehicle weight and you can see that it sits quite high and that's because I think it's got beefed up suspension to allow for the weight of that battery pack. The um, curb weight of this I think is 2,600 kilos um, but yeah I th I'm sure the suspension has been beefed up because there's quite a lot of clearance between the uh, tyre and the wheel arches there and it does seem to look rather high off the ground at the front it does that front bumper does sit a long way off the ground it almost looks like a 4x4 version um, however when you see under the battery pack underneath you can see why so that battery pack underneath is absolutely huge let's just zoom up to it there you can see it sits in a really heavy duty steel carcass but it pretty much goes two-thirds of the length of the van it's one hell of a lump and that's a 56 kilowatt hour battery pack but a serious amount of weight is obviously in that pack but yeah looking at this steel really heavy gauge steel and you can see underneath their box sections so yeah this battery is well protected to show you what's under the bonnet as well so looking under the bonnet we see we've got SAIC motors again on the um, motor stack here. Well, the electric motors down below. These enclosures at the top will be the charger and the inverter circuits. Uh, and SAIC motors just make a huge amount of electric vehicles. Uh, they've been making EVs over in China in huge numbers way before us Europeans have seen them. Um, so yeah, underneath here we've got brakes. Um, coolant bottle here so all of this lot is water cooled to keep it cool um, windscreen washer bottle everything that's orange is the high voltage cables so we'll have cables at the back there coming from the traction battery underneath and then all these cables will be coming from the um, charge ports and uh, obviously this unit over here is the converter DC to DC so what that does is um, charges the 12 volt battery so when you're running because obviously an electric vehicle doesn't have um, an alternator to charge the battery so you have this DC to DC converter and that will be taking 400 volt DC down to 14 volt DC 
to charge the battery while you drive. So yeah, if you don't know, all EVs have a standard 12 volt battery, particularly a big one in this case for an electric van. Uh, it's probably the same battery they use for the diesel version. Um, so the 12 volt battery uh, starts the vehicle basically um, and it keeps everything standard. So your lights, wipers, all the ECUs, your dash and everything is all standard 12 volt stuff. And your central locking is 12 volt. And then when you turn the key, it's all 12 volt until you switch the vehicle on. And then this is powering the contactors to um, make live that 400 volt traction battery underneath. So the vehicle's completely reliant on the 12 volt to start just like it is with an ICE vehicle. Um, and that's obviously why you then have that DC to DC converter to charge that while you're driving. So the electric motor on this isn't a hugely powerful one uh, for a van of this size. Uh, it's fine, it does the job perfectly well. I'll put the stats up on the screen, I can't remember what the power is of it. Um, but uh, obviously this is a big van, a very large heavy van. Um, and I think the motor is probably more powerful than it is in the uh, Renault Master. Uh, but what I found is it drives lovely. It really is a nice van to drive. It was quite a surprise. It was so much better than I thought and incredibly quiet. Even for an electric, this is quiet. You cannot hear the tires at all. Really smooth, very nice linear acceleration, of course, as you always get. Um, this doesn't have a CVT gearbox, which the brochure says that's a marketing mistake. Uh, they just have a, a reducing gearbox reducing gearbox on the motor like all EVs do and um, there's no gearbox as such um, of course electric motors don't need gearboxes um, but yeah nice linear acceleration um, but uh, the top speed is capped at 100 kilometers an hour which I think is 63 miles an hour so it's not the sort of van you're going to be wanting to bomb along on motorways but then um, that's not its sort of market these are designed for um, more urban use uh, but to be honest a van of this size a lot of employers limit the top speed anyway so it's it is perfectly adequate uh, but really really nice to drive so next I'll quickly talk about the charging the charge port is at the side here near the driver's door and we've got two charge sockets top one is type 2 AC um, I can't remember the spec of this I think they don't actually declare what it is um, it's certainly a 7 kilowatt but it might be an 11 kilowatt charger but anyway overnight charging on AC at the top the bottom socket is a CCS DC rapid charge socket so this is what you would use when you're out uh, during the day and you want to extend your range on a public DC rapid charger this is a 30 kilowatt socket um, well a charger should I say and um, that will charge the vehicle from 0 to 80 percent I think in an hour and a half Whereas obviously on slow AC charging, that's going to be an overnight charge. On later vans, they also incorporated a second AC charging port on the front bumper there, but this van doesn't have that fitted. So let's jump up and have a look inside. So these have a traditional key and starting. And then obviously when it starts, you get the ready light up there. This has got the upgraded um, touchscreen multimedia system with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Um, very slick, very fast. Uh, you've got a few settings here. It is quite basic, um, but yeah, you've got radio, um, phone mirroring, no sat nav. Um, that's about it. You've got a gear selector here, very nice big gear selector. When we put it into reverse, we've got a parking camera at the back with parking sensors as well. And then here we've got our heating controls, all standard uh, with air conditioning as well. Uh, two cup holders there that slide out, 12 volt socket, two USBs. Um, and uh, yeah, that's about it. We've got a switch there for heated mirrors, fog lights, hazard lights traction control, a few buttons on the steering wheel for our um, multimedia system. Um, the horn buttons are here and here, so you've got to be a little bit careful using your palm of your hand when you're reversing and pushing down on the steering wheel, but you soon get used to that. Um, lights and wipers, all standard. Um, 
The nice thing though with this is because we've got centrally mounted uh, dashboard there, you get a very good view out the front and quite low. They obviously do this to make it very easy to convert from left and right hand drive. You can see this part of the moulded dash is exactly the same to that side, so yeah, very quick and easy switch over for them. Um, don't change much here, uh, I guess they do change that to that side, but you can see these dials of designed for left-hand drive because the little tick there to show you where the dial is is on that side which is a bit difficult to see for the UK um, right-hand drive side but yes yeah, all fine um, decent size glove box which makes a change airbag there as well huge grab handles and loads of space above storage up here um, being a high roof van they do give you the full height in the cab as well seats are very comfortable full width in the middle as well for a third person and an armrest here for the driver and up here on the dash this is our power meter uh, blocks up this side will show when you're using power and dropping down here will show when you're regening um, this is our battery pack with 50 percent charged there uh, standard stuff in the middle and then over here we've got a little screen which shows time our trips um, and then here we've got our GOM and various information on the electric drivetrain as well. Get various uh, screen savers on here but if we move along actually let's go to settings there we can see we've got follow me home on the lights uh, we've got some locking stuff here Bluetooth, auto answer, general, um, this is our um, sound information, screen brightness, yeah not much in the way of setup so um, and then our Bluetooth. So what this doesn't have is any adjustment on the regen or different driving modes or any um, economy figures either. So all quite basic in that respect, but of course that's fine for a van. So uh, in terms of range, uh, officially these are I think 120 miles with standard roof and I think 116 miles with a high roof, but that's with the load in the back. I have driven this recently and you can see I've got, uh, well this was showing 60 miles, I've had the air conditioning on while I've been filming. Uh, just to keep me cool in here but yeah 60 miles with half a tank left so um, I was achieving the 120 miles quite easily and I was doing all that driving with the aircon on as well so it wasn't as efficient as it could be but yeah empty if you're in towns doing urban stop start driving where your road speed is much less as well obviously you're going to get a lot more than 120 miles with a 56 kilowatt hour battery pack. So the only other things in the cab here, we've got headlight adjustment, a switch there for our central locking, lock and unlock. We've got an electric handbrake, which does come on and off automatically when you stop and it gets that right all the time. We've got height adjustment on the driver's seat. Uh, this one tilts the front and this one tilts the back. Um, storage underneath the seats on both sides. We've got the toolkit there under the driver's seat for um, wheel changes because this does have a full size spare at the back and then on the door here we've got the electric mirror adjustment electric windows and a decent sized door bins with enough room there to put large bottles so next the cargo area at the side here we've got a sliding door only on the near side on the uk models but that sliding door is absolutely huge i think it's even bigger than a renault master uh, which is the biggest of them all and it is an absolutely huge opening side door um, but yeah huge van obviously the high roof one so this one is the largest of them um, quite a nice flat bulkhead grab handle here to jump up into it um, very strong tethering tie down hooks uh, this one's obviously ply lined but yeah it's huge so at the back here we've got parking sensors on the bumper the bumper's painted as well which i don't think maybe isn't a great idea on a van but it looks good um, and then obviously twin doors the doors do open a full 180 degrees if you release that bar there and then you've got magnets on the side here on these rubber blocks which keep the door 
in the open position and that allows you to load it with a forklift um, but yeah it's an absolutely huge van obviously we've got the camera at the top there reversing camera we've got two lights on the sides at the top there and um, yeah I think that's about all I can show you at the back also the doors do shut really well often when you have uh, very tall vans they you do have to give them a bit of a slam to get the top and bottom to shut but quite a light slam there that is fully shut properly uh, the handles are quite low as well so it's all very nice and easy to use this has got mud flaps fitted front and back decent sized ones and on the front here they are molded around the side here not sure whether they're standard i don't think the brochure goes into that sort of level of detail but i would assume they probably are standard these do have lining in the back as well so we've got that rubber matting on the floor this has been ply lined so that's just been screwed down on top but uh, behind there will be plastic lining again on the sides just like the new Maxus e-deliver 3 vans are they all come pre-lined and uh, it's the same rubber flooring inside the cab here as well so I think that's about it. I just wanted to get this one videoed before it goes out tomorrow. Uh, as I said, this is the first one I've had of these. There's not too many of these around. I don't know how many they've sold, but they were very expensive vans when new. I think this one was £67,000 plus fat before the grant. So um, yeah, anyone who's got these vans, they're probably gonna keep them for five years or so on lease. Um, because the repayments will be quite high so it's going to be another three years or more before we see any of these in the second hand market um, obviously I've got this one at just over a year old this has only done 4,000 miles but there's not going to be many for a little while yet but I thought I'd get this out there on YouTube so when the time comes and more of these start coming through into the second hand market this will give you an idea of what they are Okie doke, cheers, bye.